Hello. Oh, hello. Yes, am I through to Jehovah's Witnesses, St. Saint, Saint Neots? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. I, I don't know if it's convenient to to speak briefly at the moment. I've been reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever. I've just got some things I don't understand. Yeah, sure. Um, can I just ask where you got my number from? Um, yes, I'm on the jw.org site, Find a Meeting. Oh, right. Well, I didn't know my name. <laughs> well, but not the name, but I don't know what your name is. The number's up. Yeah, okay, yes, Kevin Parks. Yeah, how unusual. Oh, right. My name's Robert. Well, Robert. No problem at all, no. <laughs> Right. Yeah, so, so so which book are you reading? Um, Enjoy Life Forever, which I've been reading oh, yeah. since the lockdown. Um, yeah. Page 137, it's it's lesson 33, oh. What the Kingdom Will Accomplish. Right, hang on a second, I need to find a copy of that so I can see what you're talking about. Excuse me, I've got bad back this morning. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yes. You didn't. Right. Where, where are you based? Um, I'm I'm based outside of um, St Neots. So I'm to the southwest. A long way away, or? Yes, yes. It was difficult to oh, find right. someone who I could speak to, so I've been looking at. Um, you've got a mobile phone, but if yeah. you ring a landline, you just you just get an answering machine. Um, well, I've been ringing numbers given on jw.org, find a meeting. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. I'll have to check that and see, um, see what's on there. Right. Uh, so on page 137. Uh, let's see, end of section two. So, so which section? Oh, what can we want to accomplish? Uh, lesson 13. Yes, it's point three. Oh. What will God's kingdom accomplish after the wicked are destroyed? Oh, yeah. yeah, and it, here, yeah. The first three lines are what puzzles me. It talks about people resurrected to the earth after Armageddon. Uh -huh. It says this. After the wicked are destroyed, Jesus uh -huh. will rule as king for a thousand years. During uh -huh. that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Now, I think I've understood this right. Your literature, and I forget where, teaches that these 144,000 co-rulers are called the anointed. Yeah. And they're going to be changed into non-human spirit creatures. But I, I, over the centuries, uh, as ones that have been um, chosen by God die, um, some go to heaven to rule along with Christ. It, it, it's mentioned in, in Revelation about this limited number that go to heaven. Uh, to, to join Christ, um, some are still alive now, but obviously many of, like, like the apostles, like they would have been part of that, and the early, many of the early Christians, they would have been part of that. They would have been anointed by Holy Spirit, uh, by God, uh, and chosen to, to eventually, um, you know, when they die, uh, go to heaven. Um, this is one of the differences between ourselves and many other religions. We don't believe that everybody goes to heaven. That that's that's not. I'm oh, sorry. I've lost the the train of my thought. My question was: Will the hundred and forty four thousand co rulers, who are called the anointed, will they be resurrected as non human spirit creatures? Yes. yes. Right. So Judge Rutherford and Fred Franz and the governing body you've got at the moment. I've seen Mr. Lett on JW Broadcasting and Mr. Mr. Morris. When they die, will they be turned into non human spirit creatures? Yes. Right. Right. That, that's what the, the scriptures in, in uh, says that um, that they will be given uh, a, a spiritual body um, in the heavens. I can't think of a verse that says that. Um, right. Um, but can we? Can I just deal 
with page 137 first. Let's deal with just one thing right. at a time. During that time, he, that's Jesus, and his 144,000 co-rulers yeah. will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Yeah. Why does Jesus need help? No, it's the humans on earth who need help. No, no. Jesus let... and the 144,000 will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. I, I understand Jesus that. Understand yeah. that. Let me read it again. After the wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as yeah. king for a thousand yeah. years. Yeah. During that time, he, that's Jesus, and yeah. his 144,000 co-rulers will help G yeah. humans on earth to become perfect yeah. and sinless. So Jesus yeah. and the 144,000 co-rulers, who you yeah. believe are non-human spirit creatures, will help humans resurrected to this earth during the millennium yeah. to become perfect and sinless. Why does Jesus... Uh, and, and, the, and the ones, obviously, that survived through Armageddon, the ones that were alive at the time, and survived through that, into that thousand years. Period. Why does Jesus need help? Why can't Jesus make people perfect and sinless all on his own? Why does he need help well, from... Sure hundred... he could I, could I finish? Him, could, I, could I please finish? Could I please yeah, finish? Yeah. Why does Jesus need help from these 144,000 co-rulers? Thank you. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not my question. Yeah, so, 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 no, no. That that wasn't that wasn't my question at all. I'm not asking about people who've been resurrected, who died in the seventh century, being being filled in about what's happened. It says yeah. in the book, during that time, he, that's Jesus, and his 144,000 co-rulers, will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Now, now, my Bible says that Jesus and Jesus alone forgives people of their sins. Um, speaking to the paralytic in Mark 2, 9, yeah. Jesus then says in verse 10, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic. So Jesus forgives sins, Mark 2, 10. But your book saying that Jesus will have help from the 144,000 co-rulers who are going to help those humans resurrected to the earth to become perfect and sinless. Well, I believe that only Jesus makes people sinless. I don't believe that Jesus needs... I mean, why does Jesus need help from the 144,000 co-rulers in making people perfect and sinless? I can't quite figure out what you're trying to drive after. Um, I mean, yeah, Jesus gave his life so that all of us could have our sins forgiven. The book is yeah, clearly I'm saying... Not, I'm not saying that the book is saying that, that they do that, but um, they would just help people to apply the uh, the principles of the uh, scripture... It and does, no, no, the book, no, no, the, the, no, sir. Back toward perfection. No, sir, the book doesn't say that. It says, during that time, he, that's Jesus, yeah, and yeah. his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth, that's the ones resurrected to the earth during the millennium, uh -huh. to become perfect and sinless. Now, I don't believe, I mean, I was brought up as a nominal Catholic, right? right? And we were taught that there's these seven sacraments which forgive you of your sins. And Jesus has these helpers called priests. And these priests can administer these sacraments like they can do the confessional where you confess your sins and then you're absolved. Or you can have the bread and the wine which ma magically turns into the body and blood of Jesus in the Mass. The priest has the ability to administer these sacraments and the priest helps Jesus to forgive sins. Now, your book's saying something similar, but not now, as in Catholicism, in the future. During the millennium, these 144,000 co-rulers are going to help the humans resurrected to the earth to become perfect and sinless. I don't know, why does Jesus need help? Surely Jesus and Jesus alone forgive sins. The Bible never ever records yeah, oh yeah. any uh, angel he, he, or human being having the ability to forgive sins uh, 
the the only one who forgives sins is Jesus. No, you're correct in saying that uh, they don't have that uh, ability, but they can certainly assist him in whatever plans he has to help humanity back to uh, toward perfection. Um, surely that, that there's not an issue there. Well, it says perfect and sinless. During that time, he, Jesus, and his 144,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. co-rulers yeah. will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. I don't yeah. believe the yeah. 144,000 co-rulers can help in any way making people sinless. Only Jesus makes people sinless. Only Jesus in Mark 2.10, so, surely, so gives people well, of their do you sins. See, then, as, what do you see then as the role for that, that heavenly number? I don't, I don't believe there is a heavenly number at all. Oh, right. Okay, uh, so it's... I don't believe that anyone can help Jesus forgive anyone else of their sins. I mean, I mean, how will the hundred and forty-four thousand help help to forgive help Jesus to forgive people of their sins? How will the hundred and forty-four thousand do this? As I, as I said to you before, by helping people to apply the, the scriptural principles to put them to work in their life to to see that they need to make change and become better people and then eventually at the end of that thousand years then Christ if they pass that test uh, that's, that's talked about at the end of the thousand years when Satan's released once again once they pass that uh, then they, they will be declared as, as righteous and sinless what did you say at the start just repeat what you said at the start what did you say at the very start no, I can't remember either because you keep saying too much. You you make point after point after point, and I can't follow you. Um, how will my question was how will the hundred and forty four thousand help Jesus to well, forgive I, people I, I, of their I sins? Said to you that, that they would help people to apply the, the scriptural uh, principles to become better people to work out. Well, a, uh, just one point, uh, just just one point, and I can follow you. So. If the if the hundred and forty four thousand are in heaven, and they have yeah. no contact with the people resurrected to the earth, how on earth can they sp even speak to the people on the earth if they're not on the earth? They're in heaven. By using God's Holy Spirit to direct those that, that are in positions of leadership on the earth, and the scriptures talk about there, there being. Um, he refers to them in Isaiah as like princes in the earth, um, but, but that would lead uh, mankind in that new system. Is is there a Bible verse for this where the where the anointed? Well, I mean, no, just, just let me ask. Absolutely. Just please, yeah. please. Is there any Bible verse that talks about a spirit creature in heaven or an angel in heaven being able to forgive us of our sins, or or no. helping to forgive us of our sins? Or helping to, for, uh, to to make us sinless. Could you point me to but such a verse? They can't help us. To, they can't make us become sinless. Only Christ can do that. Is that the Christ? The only but thing but but that. right. Amen. But, but then your book is a lie, like, isn't it? Being used to direct people to say, you know, you need to be doing this course or that course. Um, so so that they've been used in the past, haven't they? It, yeah, like um, when when Lot had to get out of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, it was angels that said, Come with us. "This is this is not this is not relevant. This is not relevant to forgiveness oh, of okay. sins. That's only that's the only thing I'm interested in: the forgiveness of sins. Which Bible verse talks about an angel or a spirit creature being able to forgive us of our sins? There isn't one. Right. Well, then it's not not a biblical concept, is it? <laughs> because only Jesus forgives us of, of our sins. Mark two ten. But your book says. During that time, he, Jesus, and the 144,000 co-rulers will help Jesus on earth to become perfect and sinless. Well, that's a lie. Because you admit that the 144,000 can't help Jesus to make no, people resurrected him, to the uh, earth he, sinless. He can, grant, can grant the state of sinlessness. Sorry? Uh, I said they can help, but only he, he can grant the, the, the gift of uh, declaring somebody sinless. Right, you said they can help. How do they help? I've already said that. How? I'm just repeating myself. Well, I, I didn't... I by helping people apply spiritual principles and, and example that Christ gave to improve themselves to the point where, as I say, they would pass that test at the end of the thousand years. Again, you're making numerous right points. I've forgot forgot, forgotten what you said at the start. What did you say at the start? I asked a question. What was your first response, which yeah, was the answer? I, I said they will help 
people on earth to apply Bible principles to improve themselves, to work out of themselves sinful tendencies, because we can all improve ourselves, can't we? Uh, no, we can't. We can't forgive ourselves of our sins. No, I didn't, I didn't say forgive. I said, I said we can improve ourselves. Um, also, are you saying that after people... Well, firstly, how can the anointed do this if they're in heaven and they have no contact with people on the earth? I'm saying this is true. Right, faithful people that are on this earth that are in a position of, of uh, leadership or, or guidance. So human beings on this earth will be helping other human beings who are resurrected to yeah. the earth to become sinless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but they, they won't. Uh, they can't give sinlessness to anybody so they can help along the way they can help what people to improve to change themselves so jesus doesn't forgive us at all actually salvation is something that we do through our own works and our own self-improvement according to you no 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 you're just playing on words um and i, and I can't see where this is this discussions going you're just going around in circles um, um well I, I mean, i'm trying you, to understand your book i've spent a lot of time reading your book you said you, i mean the whole concept that people are going to be resurrected are you saying they're going to have another chance of salvation after their death they'll be resurrected to the earth whether they have another chance to sort of do improve themselves to work yes right but hebrews nine twenty seven. the scriptures say that there's going to be a resurrection both of the righteous and the unrighteous Yes, but were, but to yeah, judgment, in, to to, to judgment and to the yeah. He, Hebrews nine twenty seven says, and as it is appointed for men to to die once, but after this the judgment. So there's no s resurrection, and we get a second chance after our resurrection to be saved all over again. Um, once you're resurrected, it is to the judgment. Either the judgment of believers works and then the eternal state or the great white throne judgment for the wicked and then the eternal state for them. But you don't get resurrected to the earth and have a thousand years to improve yourself and get um, an, uh, a sort of another chance of salvation because it says, and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment, Hebrews 9.27. I mean, does it concern you that what you're saying is it's not only unbiblical, but it's it's completely contrary to scripture. Uh, I don't believe that that's the case. Um, for instance, when, when um, Lazarus died, and Jesus came along to, to, to the, the scene of the resurrection, Martha said to Jesus, I believe he will rise on the last day, that there was going to be a physical resurrection. Um, I believe in the resurrection. Absolutely. I believe there's going to be a resurrection. What I don't believe is there's going to be another chance of salvation after that resurrection. Because when people are resurrected, it is to judgment. Judgment of believers' works and then the eternal state for those who die faithful in Christ and the great white throne judgment and the condemnation, eternal condemnation of the wickedness for the rest. There is no second chance of salvation after we die. Um, you, you don't believe in a physical resurrection back to this planet, then? Yes, of course I do. Revelation oh, five nice. ten says they shall reign upon the earth. You've yeah. you've assumed that I believe people are going to be in heaven for for all eternity. I've never said that, well, and I don't. Way, I do not believe that. What you said um, was you know, before the judgment throne, uh, like it's in the heavens. I. Uh, what do you mean, like it's in the heavens? I never said well, it's no, in the but heavens. The way you were phrasing it. It sounded as if that judgment and everything was taking place with them there in the heaven. Christ is coming back to this earth. The judgment's going to be on the earth. People are going to be resurrected right. in, in, into their resurrected um, physical bodies. That's not going to be in heaven. That's going to be upon this earth, oh, okay. surely. Right, but you believe Christ is physically coming back to earth? Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Um, I've, 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 I've got a watchtower here, which is related to this. It talks about the... Um, anointed um, Christians acting as priests. It's the Watchtower for the 15th of March, 2012, page 23, yeah. paragraph 12. And it says, the revealing of the anointed will have what glorious benefits for mankind. And paragraph 12 says this, what relief will come to human creation during the thousand year reign of Christ? 
At that time, the glorified sons of God will be further revealed when they act as priests with Christ, administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind. Now, when it says they will act as priests with Christ, administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind, what does that mean? Just like the uh, the priests of old used to administer the sacrifices on behalf of the nation to absolve them of their sins and all the rest of it, um, as it says there, the, the resurrected 144,000 the scriptures say will we'll act as kings and priests. Um, will similarly do things that, that will, as I say, help people to to have their simple condition undone. Um, you said that the priest in the Old Testament g did sacrifices that forgave yeah, people of their they sins? They, they did, didn't know that they were told to, to offer animals for, for forgiveness of sins or for the sins of the nation or whatever, depending on the, whatever the sacrifice was. But the priests were, were uh, empowered to do that, weren't they? No, no, the, um, the law did not have the ability to forgive us of our sins. Um, I, I I can't accept that. Um, so what what were all the animal sacrifices for? Well, it was it was symbolic. Um, of what? It was symbolic of the Messiah who was to come, and it was the Messiah who who would forgive us of our sins. It's Jesus who forgives us of our sins. Mark two eleven. Yeah. The Old Testament yeah, yeah. priests um, prefigured Christ, and it, it was it was symbolic. Yeah. At that time, put, put aside the, 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 the fact that it was yeah, foreshadowing the coming of the Messiah eventually, at, at that time, if somebody committed a sin, they had to go along to the, to the priest, didn't they? I said, right, I've done this, that, and the other. Um, I said, right, what you need to do is you know, offer a ram or whatever, whatever it was. Um, what was the point of all that then, um, if, it, if it didn't well, change their situation? Because it, it, it pointed them to the Messiah who was to come, and it was the Messiah who was to forgive them of their sins. Let me just prove it. I've just found the verse. It's Hebrews 10, 11. Um, in fact, I'll just read from verse 10. It, it, this shows that the priests could not forgive sins. The Old Testament priests could not forgive sins. By that, we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Sanctified means made cleansed, cleansed from sins. Verse 11, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Yeah. Verse 12, but this man, that's Jesus, after yeah. he had offered one sacrifice for sins, sat down forever at the right hand of God. Sat down means that the work of forgiving sins has been accomplished. So it's Christ who forgives sins. But Hebrews yeah, ten eleven is emphatic in saying that the old covenant priests, the Old Testament priests, could yeah. not forgive sins. What they performed uh, in the temple was just symbolic. Yeah, it, it was. It was to emphasise to the nation that they had done something wrong. They needed to atone to that to try to put their position before God better. But they didn't forgive their sins. But no, you said they did. Not, not, not as a. Person, you no. said that they did. You said that the Old Testament no, priests were, forgive were people of their sins. For their sins weren't they? Pardon? They were, they were asked to make the sacrifice to atone for what the, the sins that they've done. And that's why that scripture in, in verse 11 says they can never take their sins away completely. Um, they've made <sighs> some atonement for what they've done. Um, but their, their humanly sinful condition, which is inherited, could not be undone by a, by a priest who himself was, mm -hmm. himself was imperfect. Um, that watched our article. When it says, at that time, the glorified sons of God will be further revealed when they act as priests with Christ, administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind. Isn't that saying that during the millennial reign, the thousand-year reign, the, the priests, these anointed who've been turned into non-human spirit creatures, will be administering the benefits of Christ's ransom sacrifice. That means in some way um, making people sinless and perfect. 
there'll be i mean how they do that from heaven while whilst whilst the people are on the earth i don't know because there'll be no contact between the anointed in heaven and well, those on the earth according to jehovah's will. That, we don't know how that will operate po but, but possibly because it's not going to operate that, that way at all sorry possibly because it's not going to I mean, the idea that these anointed are going to be working as priests in the forgiveness of sins. Come on, sir, that's not biblical, is it? They're not forgiving sins. What does it, it mean? Say that. It, says, it says it will be administering the benefits of what Christ has done. And what is the benefit of that ransom sacrifice? That humans can eventually have their sins expunged from them. There you are. So these priests in heaven... Who have no contact with those on earth somehow your book is saying the watchtower for the 15th of march 2012 page 23 that these priests these anointed in heaven who have no contact with those people on the earth are going to be helping jesus to apply the benefits of the ransom sacrifice i.e forgiving people of their sins i mean this is not biblical is it sir this is nonsense and the idea no, that, no, not the way you're putting it and um, well I'm simply trying to read your literature accurately. The idea, especially, that there is that the, the, these which, people which, are to be turned into non-human. Which, which article was that? Sorry. Watchtower. Two thousand and twelve. Watchtower, fifteenth of March, two thousand and twelve, page twenty-three, paragraph eleven. Paragraph twelve. March. Let's find that. Fifteenth of March. The sorry. Page 23, it's during the millennial reign. I'll read it again. What relief yeah. will come to human which, creation? Which paragraph? Hang on, which paragraph? 12. 12. What relief will come to human okay. creation during the thousand year reign? So this is the millennium. Yeah. It's talking about people resurrected yeah, to the yeah. earth. Yeah, yeah. At that time, the glorified sons of God, that's the anointed in heaven, yeah. Yeah, yeah. W will have further revealed will be further revealed when they act as priests. All right? Now, the context yeah, for mentioning yeah. priest is regarding the forgiveness of sins. When they act as priests with Christ, administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind. Catholicism teaches that today. Catholicism teaches that the Pope appoints the bishops, the bishops appoint the priests, and the priests work with Jesus to forgive people of their sins on earth today through the seven sacraments. The Jehovah's Witness religion is teaching something very similar to this, but with a difference. The difference is the priests will be the 144,000. They're not going to be on earth. They're going to be in heaven as non-human spirit creatures. And they're going to administer the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind. In other words, as your book Enjoy Life Forever said, they're going to make people perfect and sinless. They're going to be involved with Jesus in the forgiveness involved, of sins, yes. which involved. is exactly what Catholicism teaches. Jehovah's Witnesses uh, only, have only ended up, can, after can, 140 uh, years, teaching something very similar to Catholicism. Well, I wouldn't say that. But <laughs> well, do you believe... That there are. The do bar, you believe? Uh, do you believe, as Catholicism teaches, there are going to be uh, other people who will help Jesus to forgive other people of their sins? In Catholicism, yes, these people are called priests. They're here on earth today, and they will, through the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church, help to um, forgive people of their sins. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that this priestly work of forgiving sins will be done chiefly by Christ, but he'll be assisted by the anointed. And that's yeah. not going to happen now. It's going to happen during the thousand years millennium. Yeah. So it's not the same yeah. as Catholicism. It's different, it's not, but it's, it's, it's similar. Yeah, it's similar. It's similar. Like that. It's similar because you teach that people will help Jesus to forgive, to forgive other people of their sins. And that's the basis of Catholicism. That's the well, basis not, of the priesthood. Yeah, but you're misapplying the word priest. The word priest is used of of Christians. Um, sorry, I've just got trouble with the cable here because I'm toggling off a phone. First um, Peter two nine talks about what Christians will do as kings and priests, and it, it's a ministry of praise. Christians don't have a ministry of forgiving other people of their sins, despite what the lunatic TV preachers like. Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar say. Yeah. 
Um, let, let me just read the verse to you. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy priesthood, nation, yeah. his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. So the priesthood that Christians will have is of praising God for all eternity. It is not a priesthood like the Catholic priesthood claims for their priesthood, where you go up to another man, another person, right? And you, yeah. you do various religious rites, like the Catholics have the seven sacraments. And through these seven sacraments, the priest, the Catholics claim, can forgive you of your sins. Th this is, this is what don't. Jehovah's which Witnesses are uh, saying. Uh, you, you believe that the priesthood that the anointed are going to get, like Stephen Lett when he's turned into a, an angel, spirit creature like angel, uh, yeah. and Fred Franz and Judge Rutherford who've now become sp or will become spirit angels, spirit creatures like, like, like the angels. Yeah. You believe they're going to have a priesthood of forgiving humans resurrected to the earth of their sins. That's what this article is clearly saying. Uh, 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 and that's helping, utter blasphemy. Of helping Christ, acting as a, as that's, a that's utter blasphemy. An, an intermediary, weren't they? That's utter blasphemy because Jesus and Jesus alone forgives sins. Mark 2.10. Yeah, but that you right. may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. It's the Son of Man, Jesus yeah. Christ, to forgive sins. He doesn't have yeah. any helpers. He doesn't have any anybody helping him. No angel, no spirit creature, no human being can help Jesus to forgive sins. That's right. the basis so, of Catholicism. The Pope was is appointed. They claim he's the successor of Peter. The Pope appoints the bishops. The bishops appoint the priests. And the priests help Jesus to forgive you of your sins today, here on earth, through the seven sacraments. And your twist on is that um, the 144,000 are going to become non-human spirit creatures. Stephen Lett will be floating there as a sort of angel. I'm sure you'll still be saying there's more money going out than there is <laughs> coming in. And he will then use his, um, he'll be in heaven. He won't be, but somehow, even though he's on heaven, uh, he'll be able to help those resurrected to the earth to have their sins forgiven. I mean, come on, this is, this is so nutty. Can't you see this is just an American business corporation that's, that's scamming you, sir? Are you that deceived? Uh, anyway, yeah, you know, as I say, it's been an interesting conversation with you, but all you're just trying to do is, is not seek answers. You're just trying to destroy my faith, which you won't do. Uh, sir, um, sir, you can't even quote your own literature properly. All right? Well, it's because you've got it in front of you, and you've, you've obviously researched this, and then you're expecting me to remember what I watched Tower of Hill from 10 years ago. Right. Do you, um, do you um, want to spend a week preparing and speak to me in a week's time? No, I don't. No. You don't? OK. Because, Why because is that? Your, your mind is already fixed. Well, my mind is fixed with the facts, sir. And the fact is that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is teaching blasphemy here. The idea that well, anyone helps Jesus to forgive sins, sir, is blasphemy. Can you show me a Bible verse where anyone other than Jesus forgives sins? Please show me a Bible verse where an angel or a spirit creature. There isn't. There isn't because it's an it's 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 not a biblical doctrine, sir. It's it's called blasphemy. And, and, and we don't teach that people forgive sins. Only Jesus. Does. You teach that the hundred and forty-four thousand spirit creatures will help Jesus to forgive help. sins. Yeah. It says and that, that on page one hundred and thirty-seven. Yeah of enjoy life forever during that time that's the millennium he and the 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless so they are not directly forgiving people of their sins but they're helping jesus to forgive people of their sins and sir that's exactly what catholicism teaches that the priesthood of the catholic church helped jesus and that's blasphemy if you've got an issue with our publications can i suggest that you you write to the head office. I have. All oh, right. I have. And they said, go to JW.org and do some more research. They're not interested in this. They're part of an American business corporation that's out to make money. They don't care about the Bible, sir. They don't care what the Bible says. They're out to make money. And it's, it's, like, it's like Mr. Lett said, there is more money going out than there is coming in. And it's all about the money. It's all about the dollars. It's all uh, about cash. I, I, I see it totally different because 
asking for money is just a, a, a minimal part of our, our organisation. Minimal. Unlike all these other ones that are saying, oh, send us your money through this. Through oh, that, I through see. That. I see. So the other organisations are all bad when they ask for money, but your organisation is not bad when you ask for money. Go on, JW. JW Broadcasting. They're constantly asking okay. for more donations. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for your time, sir. Yeah, no, that's all right. Take care. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.